everyone. This is Esther L. Jones, and um, I have had some requests for a video concerning oil stains. So today I'm going to show you how to use oil paints to do an oil stain underpainting for pastels. Yes, it does work. Um, I There's been a lot of questions. Can you put pastel over oil? Well, you can't put pastel over oil paint but you can put it over an oil stain and today I'm going to teach you how to do that. All right let's just go over the things that you're going to need for an oil stain underpainting. You will need brushes. Um, today I'm going to be using the biggest brushes that I can. I always do that with my underpaintings to keep them loose. So these two big brushes about a two inch and a one and a half inch and uh, we'll be using those to apply it. You'll need some oil paints, and I just invested in a 24 color set from Blick. They don't have to be expensive uh, to do the oil stain, and um, they're gonna last you a really long time. These I got on sale, so I picked up the whole set. You're gonna need some Gamsol, all right? And Gamsol is like the, um, um, thinner, it's like paint thinner, but it's um, odorless and um, nice to use, uh, less poisonous and toxic than turpentine. I have picked out six colors to use in my underpainting. Using my analogous um, color wheel, I know that the flowers that I want to paint um, in this field, it's a field of flowers, are yellow. And so I've pulled up the yellow on the dominant color. I have adjacent hue, hues of orange and yellow green. And down here I have the complement, which is blue purple, and the discord, which is kind of a greeny blue, and another discord, which is a mauvey purple. And so I uh, wanted to make sure that my colors were going to harmonize so I pulled that up and I've kind of chosen colors that go with the um, colors on my color wheel. Now what I'm about to paint is a field of flowers okay this is what this particular uh, painting technique is really good for because it will give you a lot of texture. Now if you the painting that you're going to be using is not does not have a lot of texture or you don't like a lot of texture this underpainting technique might not be for you and I'll show you why in a little while but it is also really great I mean it does great texture but it's also really great uh, for all the the surprises that you end up with to work with in your underpainting. So you also, if you're not a person who likes surprises, who likes to work with whatever happens, this might not be a technique for you. But I happen to like that. Um, Richard McKinley uses this technique in some of his paintings. Karen Margulis uses it. I'm sure there are others. Those are just two that I know. So my six colors are... Cadmium Red Hue, Crimson, Alizarin Crimson. I have a little Burnt Umber to kind of uh, bring things down to um, a, a darker color, a shade. I have Dioxazine Purple, my favorite. I also have Cadmium Yellow Hue. And I have, for the blue part of the sky, I have light blue. Um, I'm going to go ahead with that. I'll probably end up darkening it with pastel. All right. And I have just this plastic tray that probably had, I don't know, cheese and vegetables and stuff in it. And I use it, I've used it multiple times, you can tell. And each one of my color mixtures is in... A different section. I'm going to add Gamsol to this um, to where each one of these is really thin 
um, about the thinness of iced tea. If you're a tea drinker, that's where we're going to go with this. We don't want it too thick because we don't want it to um, use up the tooth of our paper. My paper is a 16 by 20 piece of UART 400, so let's dig right in. Getting my Gamsol. I'm going to start at the top with the blue and the purple, so I'm just going to go ahead and add Gamsol to each one of these. And I'm going to begin at the top with the blue. Um, no reason, really. That's just a, a logical thing for me. And I'm going to take my brush and mix that all up. You can see it's quite thin. There's not a lot of body to that. And that's exactly what we want. We want it to be kind of runny. We want it to be thin so it doesn't take up any of our tooth. I'm going to add a little bit more Gamsol to that, make it just a little bit runnier. And I know that my blue section of my painting is going to be here. All right. Brush that off a little bit in that section. And let's move on to the purple. I know the purple um, trees are going to be in the area next to the blue. So the purple is next. Oh, I love that color. Love it. I love color. We can just put a period at the end of color, and that would also be accurate. See how thin that is, how it's going on? That is part of what you want. You are after the texture that's going to come from this. So it is okay for it to be runny, and it's okay for it to run into that blue. It's perfectly fine. In fact, I believe, let's see. I'm going to add some, um, I'm going to add some red color up here because that is going to go green up here. The purple um, trees are here and then that's going to go green. So let me get some of this red going over here. I have mixed um, a crimson red and... Uh, well, now I can't remember. Oh, uh, I've mixed the uh, cadmium red with the alizarin red. I wanted a warmer red than the alizarin uh, will give you. So that I'm going to drip that in up here where there are other trees, greener trees. I'm going to take that across over here. There's green trees over here. And they're quite dark, so I'm going to, there's a quite dark area here. So um, in a little while, I'm going to come back and darken that up, not just with red, but uh, with some more of that burnt umber. And now I, I really want just the field to be um, a beautiful red underneath. It's going to help us with uh, the, all the green um, uh, to, to bring some pop to all the green that's in that field. Um, but first, I need to uh, put my flowers in. So I'm going to take my other brush. I'm going to mix in this yellow, and I'm going to place those flowers so that I know where they are. 
and they don't get lost in the shuffle. Okay, I know some of them are right here. I am not worried about that other paint being there. It's just the underpainting is just a map. All right. There's going to be more here. Those that's probably like a whole like patch of them, small ones in the distance there. And I want the eye to be led, so those are where all my flowers are going to be. And then I mixed up this browner sort of red because the tops of the flowers, these are, um, well, I can, I'm bittersweet um, is what they're called. And so, um, not bittersweet, bitter something else. I can't remember right now, but the tops of them are a very uh, vibrant red-brown color. So I mix that up. I'm going to throw that into the yellow, like on the top of that, to help with my color. Just some dots of it here. Look at my brain lining those things up. Your brain will try to help you. It will try to line things up. Now I'm just going to spot things around. And if I don't like where they are, no problem. I'm going to cover them up. So it is okay to not worry about that. I don't have the color intensity I want right up here. So it's a little more. All right. And so... Now, with all that, let's see, I'm going to pull in some of See, I just get a little wild with my color, um, and that is okay. It's okay to be wild, and this is all up and down and down in here. Um, the grass is going every which way, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do about that here in a minute. First of all, I'm putting it on in that sort of a pattern, straight up and down, back and forth, grassy sort of feel. You've got my little S curve there to lead your eye. Now, the really interesting thing about this, and you can start to see it um, now. I'm going to get you a little bit closer. Well, I thought I was. Let me lift it up for you. You can see it starting to happen already. You can see it start to make some drips. And some... Over here on this side, there's a good example of it. I don't know what you call this texture, but that's the texture that is going to help us in um, our uh, painting. So we, we want that to happen. We can influence it to a certain extent how we want that texture, the direction we want it to go, but there's a lot of it that we just don't have any control over. And that is okay. So here we have the underpainting. And uh, when it dries, I will come back and give you a good look at that as well. And you'll see it's so thin that 
it the paint itself is not going to uh, affect the pastel at all now if i had put that paint on there straight sure it would you couldn't you wouldn't be able to paint over that with pastel but it's on there very thin that's why they call it an oil stain and this is already looking pretty exciting to me so i'm i'm looking forward to sharing it with you whenever it dries. Oh, I think I need some dark right in here. We talked about that. So here we go, some more dark. It's gonna be kind of trees in here, so. I don't mind, all right. So now I will go clean up my mess while that dries and I will be back to show you the results. Okay, my friends, it's been a couple of days. I filmed the first part of this on a Sunday and um, it is now Tuesday morning very early. That's how I get my painting time in. Um, so I wanted to show you the results of the oil stain painting. What, that is one of the downsides of the oil stain painting, unlike uh, a dry pastel underpainting or a um, even an alcohol wash underpainting. Uh, a, a oil stain painting takes a little bit longer to, to dry and get to the point where you can paint it. Um, but as you can see, all kinds of special things have happened to this. Um, as a result of the oil stain drying and it could even cause me to take this painting in a whole uh, different direction than what I first intended. You can see that there are all kinds of granulations and I don't know what those call are called striations. Um, surely they have a technical turn for them in the painting world that I'm unaware of, uh, being untrained and self-taught. But I'm really excited about starting to paint on this one, and I hope that it will really help you to understand how fun and exciting and different using an oil stain painting is.
everyone. I hope that you really enjoyed seeing uh, the process of doing an oil stain underpainting, and I hope that you're planning to go out and give that a try. It doesn't matter if it all gets covered over. Uh, the idea is to give yourself a map. And I always want to encourage uh, my viewers to um, go into the studio or get out your art supplies with an attitude of what if or why not. I want you to say, what if I tried this? What happens if I put this color on? How can I try something different? Why not try this idea that I had? You're going to find so much more fulfillment and joy in the process. Uh, behind me, you see the painting that I did finish um, with that uh, oil stain underpainting. And as I said, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you really liked it, I would love it if you would point uh, yourself to that subscribe button and hit the notifications so that it will always let you know when I put up a new video. And also visit my website at www.estherljones.com. I uh, sign off then as the Mary Hardest and include you encourage you to do uh, art and to make the world more beautiful. Bye!